This video is full of absolutely essential tips that you need to know for unwrapping your objects quickly, easily, and effectively. If you like what I do, then do check out my website for my excellent and low price courses. You can currently get four courses for only $30 with our Black Friday deal. And check the playlists on this channel for more great content, particularly the UV unwrapping playlist. Links in the description. Tip one, selecting the shortest path. So the first tip is how you select your edges in the quickest way possible. Obviously you've got Alt left click to select an edge loop and I can right click mark seams, but you can also select by the shortest path. If I select this one here and I want to go up to this one right at the top here, I can control click that one and I've got the shortest path from one to the other. I can then right click and mark seams. So a nice simple tip there to start us off. Tip two, unwrapping multiple objects at once. Now, another quick tip that you may not be aware of is that you can unwrap multiple objects on one UV map. This is very useful if you've got lots of game assets and you only want one texture map, let's say a 1K or 2K texture map for all the game objects, where we can select them all at the same time, go into edit mode, and you can see at the moment their UV maps are overlapping each other, but with everything selected, I can simply press U to unwrap and unwrap, and it's separated all the UVs out, and now they're all fitting into this texture square. Tip three is to apply your scale. In this small scene here, I have a very small monkey head. And if I select them all, go into edit mode, select all the faces and go to unwrap and unwrap. The monkey head, which is this part here and the ears and the eyes here, is the same size in terms of the unwrap as the other objects. So the texture for this will be much more detailed than the textures on these. Let's go into object mode and investigate. So into object mode, Select one of these objects, N to bring up my toolbars and go to item. You can see that the scale is set to one. However, if I click on the monkey, you can see that his scale has been reduced. But Blender in the unwrap is not taking this reduction into account. In order to do that, I need to apply this scale so that it keeps its same size and this becomes one. And you do that by selecting your object, pressing control A and applying the scale. And you can see they're all back to one. Now, if I press N to get rid of that toolbar, select all, go into edit mode, select all the faces and press U, unwrap. You can see that the monkey is now unwrapped with that correct scale. And therefore the detail will be consistent across all my objects. Tip four is using a generated texture. But how do I know if my detail is consistent across my objects? Well, the next tip is using a generated texture to check your UV unwraps. This is what a generated texture looks like on our objects. One useful thing about a generated texture is that it will show you if you've got any stretch on your object. So you can see that these faces here are very stretched compared to the numbers on the end with these faces. So it's helpful to have this generated texture so we can see the consistency in the sizes because we have those numbers there. It can also help to see where your seams are and whether you need to hide some seams from view and move your seams around a bit. I'll talk more about how we can sort out stretching a little bit later on. So in our example, we want to check the consistency of the texture sizes across our different models. So we don't have too much detail on one than another. So let's show you how to create one. So for this, I'll just bring out a new window and change this to the shader editor and press N to get rid of that panel. I like to have my UV editing workspace set up like this because then I can see the shader and therefore any textures that are attached. Now in my UV editor, I'll pan across to where it says new and click on the new sign. Obviously I can give it a name and a size, but that's not important. What we want is actually the generated type here. Change that to either a UV grid or I prefer a color grid. Click on that and press okay. And we've created this new texture, but we can't see it in here yet because we haven't actually got any materials on our objects. So let's click on new, which has created a new principle BSDF. And you can either add a new texture in here with shift A texture, image texture, or if you have the Node Wrangler installed, which is much faster, and I would thoroughly recommend you install it. It comes with Blender, and you just go to Edit, Preferences, Add-ons, type in Node, and make sure the Node Wrangler is ticked. You can then close this down and select your principled BSDF, and all you need to do now is press Control T, and it will bring up your image texture, as you can see there, and some mapping nodes, which could be useful. Under the image texture, this small drop down here, you've got your untitled, as I called it, UV color grid. We can't see it in here yet because I need to go to material preview mode. So I'll scroll across here, choose material preview mode and back into object mode. The only thing that has it at the moment is the monkey because that was the active object. So that's the one that's got this material up here. I need to select these two and select the monkey last 
and press Ctrl L to link my materials. Now they've all got that one material. And now I can see if the detail is consistent. So looking at the size of the letters, they're a bit squashed on my monkey. They should be a similar size across my objects. But we can see there's a little bit of inaccuracy there, which demonstrates nicely why we need that UV color grid, which also leads us on to our next tip about averaging island scale. Tip five, average island scale. So if I go into edit mode, select all, under UVs, I can press average island scale. And you can see that my numbers now are actually the same size. I do need to reposition my UVs, as you can see there. But by using the UV and average island scale, it makes sure I've got consistency in terms of the detail across my textures. And these textures on the monkey won't have more pixels spent on them than the textures on the side of this cube, for example. Tip six, dealing with stretching. So you might be able to see with this monkey that some numbers are bigger than others and some are excessively big and they do look like they're stretched across the model. And that's all to do with the way it's unwrapped. Take the ear, for example. The seams in the default unwrap of the monkey are all the way around the ear, which you can just about see there, and then across the top of the ear. So it's trying to unwrap this side this way and this side this way to flatten it out. But what happens in these areas in here? Well, because we've got our UV color grid, we can see that there is a bit of stretching, but you kind of wonder how much stretching there is. Well, not only have we got the usefulness of this UV color grid texture, we can also, if I come across the UV editor over here, middle mouse button to scroll across the menu, I can come to the overlays here. In this drop down, there is display stretch. Now nothing's visible at the moment. I need to select all my mesh and you can see here that it's turned blue. I'll just close down the texture in the background and zoom into that a bit more. Now, as I was saying, we've got a bit of stretching going on here. So let's take a look at that area. Incidentally, if you want to find an area, I'll scroll back across my menu. You can use this button here, UV Sync Selection. When I press that, anything I select in here will appear selected in the viewport. And I can always press the period key on my numpad to zoom in on the selected, just in case you can't find it on your mesh. That's also under your view menu up here, frame selected. I'll just zoom out just a touch and we can see that this area that I've highlighted in the viewport has some green to it. So green is kind of a bad color, whereas blue is an okay color. And there's actually a fair bit of green on this monkey model. How much stretch you allow is up to you and how much it distorts your textures. But as you can see down the bottom of our monkey just here, this A does seem very stretched. And if I come to the bottom of the monkey, you can see that that's that green area there and we've got some green areas here. When you see those green areas, that means you might need to do a bit more unwrapping. For example, I could come into here and maybe mark a seam here and perhaps across up here. So I'll go to edge mode, select the edge going up there and across here, up to the UV menu, mark seam. And you can see that extra seam going across there. I'll actually need to go the other way as well. So right click mark seam and then select all and new to unwrap. Now we can see that number there being very different and there's not so much stretch at the bottom. Now that's helped the stretch, but we have got a seam here, so there's a break in the texture. So it's not always advantageous to add more seams. So sometimes you want some stretch, so you don't have any break in the textures, or you definitely don't want the stretch, therefore you add some more seams to help the unwrap. Tip seven, select overlap. Now the next tool is particularly useful if you've got quite a detailed mesh and you don't want to do a clean unwrap, particularly in complex meshes I find, but it's not always the case. It might just be that you haven't unwrapped your object particularly well, but occasionally you get islands that overlap each other. So let's use the monkey as an example and I've subdivided it quite a few times as if it's a sculpt. And let's say I'm being a bit lazy, so I'll add a modifier and I'll just decimate it to try and reduce the poly count. So 0.1 in this case and apply that. Again, I'm being a bit lazy, so I don't want to mark any seams. I'm just going to go to edit mode, select all and unwrap and do a smart UV project. Now for my island margin, I'll set it to 0.01 and I'll press OK. If you want to know why I choose 0.01, then do check out my recent video on island margins. So with that set, let's take a look at our unwrap. Looks a little bit messy, but I'll talk a bit more about that later. And let's press Control spacebar to maximize the UV editor. You can tell it's hard to see whether islands overlap each other or not. And we certainly don't want any overlap because that's where a texture gets repeated and it can look very ugly. So I can zoom in and try and find areas that overlap. There might be one in here, for example, that looks like it's overlapping and it looks pretty messy, perhaps here, but it's actually quite hard to find them. Well, I can deselect all with Alt A. 
I'll zoom out a bit and go to the select menu and then I can select overlap and I can see these problem areas. I now know which areas I need to go in and start tidying up. Tip eight, seams from islands. The next tool, which is seams from islands, can be very useful for tidying these things up. I'll press control spacebar to come out of full screen mode and zoom out just a touch again. If I want to tidy up my smart UV project that I have here, it's very awkward because I have no seams to tidy up. So I can't come in and press U to unwrap and unwrap. And you can see the results there, it's all gone completely wrong. So I'll undo that. I need these islands to be marked out so that I can edit it. So if I select everything, do make sure you have everything selected, otherwise it won't work, and come up to UV seams from islands. You can see that it's marked those seams out for me. And I can start to go in and edit this to try and tidy it up. So for example, I'll press Control A to deselect all, come up to my select menu and select overlap to try and find those areas. And I want to start with these areas here. Let's use my tool, so UV sync selection, to find out where that is and select that and then press the period key on my numpad to find out where that is. So this obviously needs a fair bit of tidying up and I can use my earlier tool, selecting from here, control click to select the shortest path up to here and then right click mark seams. I can probably clear these seams so I can select them like this, right click clear seams and then I can select all, U, unwrap, just check my island margins are correct and you can see it's given me all these islands again because we have automatically marked those seams. I can then deselect all, select and select overlap and start to see where I might have some overlap. You do however need to turn your sync selection off so I'll select all in here and now I can start to see where my actual overlap is. That's a little bit confusing the UV sync selection so turn that off mainly unless you want to find where on your mesh something is happening. And we can then see the problem areas and I can go in and start tidying those up again. So another useful tool there, seams from islands, combined with the select overlap and combined with all the other tools that we've talked about, you can kind of clean up scruffy unwraps. So hopefully these tips will help you in your unwrapping. So hopefully these tips will help you in your unwrapping. As always, do comment with any questions you have below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.